Hi, I'm Cindy Deneve, and I have the pleasure of talking to you today about confession. And I have brought a prop with me, Salsa Verde. You might wonder what Salsa Verde has to do with confession. Well, let me tell you. I used to be like dump this stuff on absolutely everything. I still kind of do, but not as much. But when I was in that phase, I had run out of salsa verde and it made me a little bit crabby, but I didn't want to go to the grocery store. My kids were little and I didn't want to bring them in tow because then I'd end up with a whole cart full of Doritos and Takis and candy. So I thought I'll just wait till Saturday when Marcel's home and then I can go to the grocery store by myself. My plan was to go first thing in the morning so I could have a salsa verde omelet. And so for days, that's all I was thinking about was my salsa verde omelet. And then, you know, as mornings happen, if you have any kids, you know that mornings don't always happen exactly as you had anticipated. So needless to say, I did not have my salsa verde omelet, but I thought, okay, I'm gonna still go to the grocery store and have a salsa verde quesadilla and so I was super excited so that was my motivation for the whole day was to get to the grocery store but when I was at the grocery store one problem after another and they didn't have my regular stuff and I was getting grumpier and grumpier and then I got to the salsa verde aisle and they did not have the plastic bottle they only had the glass bottle and I was like oh I cannot believe this this is the worst shopping trip ever and I just kept getting grumpier and grumpier and then I finally got home super crabby like the prices were too expensive and I just had my list of whininess and I just was in a super grumpy mood by then and then I got home and I started bringing in the groceries and then I hear a crash and what falls to the floor but my glass jarred salsa verde and if I was a cartoon, steam would have been coming out of my ears. I was so angry. Luckily, when I was putting the groceries away, nobody was in my house because I'm sure I would have been yelling and freaking out. And I could thankfully hear God's still quiet voice say, you didn't do your quiet time today. Come sit with me. And of course, I was grumpy and I did not want to listen to that voice. But eventually I put away the cold stuff and I sat down in my quiet time chair and I did my quiet time. And the very first thing God said is, you need to confess because I was not being thankful in all things. I mean, that's a command, be thankful in all circumstances. And I was not, I was being crabby in all circumstances. And so I had to actually say, okay, God, please forgive me for having such a crabby heart. And then I had to intentionally go, okay, I'm thankful that I have a car to get the groceries, that I had money to buy the groceries, that I have a refrigerator to put the groceries in, that I have kids and a family to feed the groceries to. So I had to totally transform my thinking. But it reminds me a lot when I think of that story is the importance of confession. Because if I hadn't stopped, I would have been crabby the entire day and my poor family would have not been very happy with me. But confession is super important because the cool thing is God always forgives us 100% of the time. So we'd never have to be afraid of confessing to God. And the other cool thing is he already knows what we need to confess. So we don't ever have to feel embarrassed about telling him what what our sins are. So when I was teaching Sunday school, I used to tell the kids this story. Imagine being over at your best friend's house and you're playing with their favorite toy and you accidentally break it and you're super embarrassed and you feel guilty and so you hide it in your backpack and then you make up some excuse because you need to go home really fast. And then your friend calls you the next day and says, hey, I can't find my, my toy that you were playing with. Do you know what happened to it? And you're like, oh, I don't know what happened to it. I'm sorry. And then after that, every time they call for a play date or just to chat, you just ignore them because you don't want to have anything to do with them. Why? Because you feel guilty and it reminds you how guilty you are. And it's the same thing we do that with God. And that when we were like, oh, I feel a little guilty about this. So we avoid God instead of going to him and saying, I'm so sorry, God, will you please forgive me? Because the cool thing is with God, he always forgives us. With our friend, they may or may not forgive you, but with God, 100% of the time, he's going to forgive you. And I just want to end um, with this Psalm, Psalm 32. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away and I groaned all day long. 
Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. So that's my encouragement to you today is that there is beauty in confession and that if you just sit quietly before God and let him take that scrub brush to your heart and restore that relationship with God. And it's just a really sweet thing and he will fill your heart with his joy and his peace.